The name is Charles R. Darwin. I discovered evolution. In 1859, a scientific revolution. In fact, I had discovered it in 1858. So Alfred Russell Wallace was a day or two too late. So back when I was 27 in 1836, I was on HMS Beagle as the onboard naturalist. The voyage wasn't the best, but not the worst, and not the naffest. So now, let's have a flashback of that trip I made to Bathurst. It's January the 12th, the year is 1836, and the sea with my poor stomachs, playing all sorts dirty tricks. If you need to go to bed when it is time to go to sleep, the only way to mount a hammock is take a flying leap. Dear Diary, how are you? I am unwell. Wish I weren't here. I am swinging on the beagle in my hammock, feeling queer. As I'm queasy on the beagle, as I'm feeling rather sick. We are headed for Australia. I hope we get there quick. It's hard to forecast the weather, and navigating is an art. I wonder if anyone will ever care. I invented the synoptic chart. It seems our ship's now entering Port Jackson as we speak, and I wondered if you'd like to come on shore and take a peek. The township of Bathurst stands at the height of 2,200 feet, and they grow lots of sheep, they grow lots of cattle, sometimes lots of wheat. A great many things were happening here in 1836. A hive of activity, the great golden west, and all right out here in the sticks. To the commandant of the troops, I had a letter of introduction. We stayed with him the ensuing day in terms of accommodation. Bathurst in 1836 consisted of houses and farms, and military barracks and government buildings. I almost succumbed to its charms. The township stands or sits on the banks of the famous Macquarie River, an odd sort of river as it flows backwards into the country's interior. Only one piece of architecture didn't give me a thrill, a hideous little red brick church which stands by itself on a hill. Officers seemed a bit over the place. Their spirits had started to fail. Their only hobby was shooting the breeze. They'd already shot all the quail. Captain Chetwood stalled at a garden, but his herbs looked quite pathetic. Tending a garden in a Bathurst drought is an exercise is purely academic. I did meet a farmer who had two very pretty teenage daughters. I might point out the women folk most attractive in these quarters. The men folk also grow up rather big and strapping and strong. I don't think those two farmers' daughters will remain on his hands for too long. The colonial history of Bathurst begins in 1813, when the government surveyor, one George Evans, a European, found a way across the mountains to the place where we now stand, thanks to Lawson, also Wentworth, and another man called Blacksland. Blacksland tried two times before, in case you had been wondering. Boy, speaking of Blacksland, mate, uh, aren't you forgetting something? G'day, mate. I'm a local. You can call me Windredine's Widow. You may have heard of Pemmelroy. Well, Windredine did it. My husband was a leader in the famous Bathurst Wars. He passed away. Some intertribal conflict was the cause. 
The Bathurst is the oldest inland settlement in Australia. And now, with a potted history of it, I am gonna regale ya. For 40,000 years or so, the people of the Wiradjuri were the proud custodians of this land in this air western country. The land of the three rivers, Wambu, Kalair, and Murrumbidgeri. My people belong to the land out here, and we ain't gonna give it up easy. The Wiradjuri are the largest group in so-called New South Wales, from the mountains to Hay and Ningen and Albury, won't bore you with the details. Although you white fellas got here later and done a lot of things wrong, considering that we got here first, we probably should try and all get along. I've heard about these Bathurst Wars and the Hawkesbury and the Nepean, but mostly things have settled down from all that I'm seeing. Mostly things have settled down, but we're still here, don't you worry. And one day, you white fellas might wake up and say that you are all sorry. The white fella history of Bathurst begins in 18 and 13. We should include the Bathurst Wars and Hawkesbury and Nepean. At any rate, in 1814, Governor Macquarie approved a plan by William Cox. Well, that was another story. If William Cox could build a road across the mountain range, it might provide an inland route for travel and exchange. With thirty convict laborers, an eight-man soldier guard, they finished the road in less than a year by flogging those convicts hard. The 7th of May, 1815, Macquarie raised the flag. The inauguration of the town, or city, of Bathurst was in the bag. Named after Henry Bathurst, and he was the Secretary of State, you know. Except it wasn't where Bathurst is now. In fact, it was actually in Kelso. At any rate... The township soon had ten settlers, all right, with Lee and Mills and Swanbrook, Cheshire, not forgetting Kite, and Abbott, and with Neville and John Gordon, also Blackman, and please forgive me anyone who I've forgotten to mention. Some gold was found in 1823 down in Fish River, and rapidly there came to be what's often called gold fever. In 1830, don't you know, a huge convict uprising, and out of which came ten dead men, which isn't so surprising. The Ribbon Gang, they called themselves, about two hundred convicts, were riding all about the place and terrorizing the district. A young man called Ralph Entwistle, a ticket lever from Ireland, who got fifty lashes and his ticket revoked and turned a little bit violent. He was bringing home a wool check back from Sydney on the double, but then he got caught skinny-dipping and got fifty lashes for his trouble. Because Ralph felt that stern old Sergeant Evenden took advantage, Ralph freed two hundred convicts, and they all went out on a rampage. At Abercrombie Caves they had a shootout in despair, and ten of the Ribbon Gang were captured. They hanged them in Bathurst Square. That was all in 1830. This was 1836. Things had settled down a bit, so not quite so many conflicts. Of course, I am ignoring all the wonderful history of this metropolis, but history is much more interesting, uh, recounting the atrocities.
I didn't think that much of Bathurst, frankly, when I visited. The countryside was dry and bare, the convicts uninhibited. I must admit, I went there in the middle of a drought, but just as soon as I got in, I got quite keen to get back out. But fast forward to Bathurst, circa 1985. Go to the bottom of Mount Panorama and take an upward drive. So if we could flash forward to the Bathurst of today, I'm sure that I would look at it in quite another way. The bicentennial Bathurst of the year 2015 would make a proper gentleman from England turn quite green. Bathurst Fossil and Mineral Museum with a giant T-Rex skeleton, opals and glittery sparkling things in the famous Somerville collection, and even a great many trilobites from the Cambrian explosion. A trilobite is a sort of a crab, like a prehistoric crustacean. And don't forget Australia's National Motor Racing Museum. Mount Panorama's like Australia's modern Roman Colosseum. The Great Mount Panorama with its panoramic views, where the V8 races always make the television news. Uh, speaking of television news, uh, some names that I could be telling include Chris Barth, Amanda Keller, Jessica Rowe, Natasha Belling, Charles Sturt University. University's communication degree heritage produced the likes of all these names, including Samantha Armitage. The Holy Trinity Church, consecrated by a bishop. The history of Ben Chifley, Ben Macquarie, and MacKillop, and All Saints Cathedral and St. Stanis, Cobbin Care. If you haven't been to Bathurst, you probably should go. Bathurst was the first to grow the grapes and also hops, and the town is really great. It's just grouse. It's Tops! The honey made in Bathurst from the famous yellow box is known for its miscosity, more golden than Fort Knox. I haven't even mentioned all the gold rush memorabilia. Bathurst had the biggest gold rush ever in Australia. Annie's ice cream Devonshire tea, if you ever need a snack. And I haven't even talked about the brand new horse race track. The first x-ray for medical purposes here in this wide brown country was taken at our St. Stanislaus by one Father James Slattery. And don't forget the edgels, any time you may disparage us, the edgels here in Bathurst were the first to grow asparagus. At any rate, I didn't live to see all this, of course. As all I did was ride out west to Bathurst on a horse. I may have criticized the place a little prematurely, because the problem was I came to Bathurst 200 years too early.